Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. I am continuing with the Waterberry Button series and ident showing you um, buttons that were actually made by that company so that if you have them in your treasure chest of button dreams, you can identify them because some of their buttons were clearly marked and others obviously had different marks such as W, B, C, and the letter W. And sometimes it just said Waterbury, Connecticut on some of them. And the way that Connecticut is represented on the older ones, it will say C-O-N-N -N period. Um, if it's newer, it's just going to be C-T. I don't have any new ones. These are all vintage and older. Um, so there's some old antique ones in there, but there's also obviously a lot of vintage ones. And I consider vintage anything that's less than 80 years old just as a guide. Anything over 80 years old, that's what I consider to be antique. Um, and some, I may not know if they're on the line of antique and vintage, so I'm not going to necessarily sit there and tell you this one's antique, this one's vintage. I'm just showing you what I have in my collection, my own personal collection, and also, like I said, you'll be able to use the videos in this series as a guide to whether you have any of these super special American-made buttons. So that's a huge thing. All of these buttons were made in Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, they did not source out the work. Um, they don't source out the work. They're still in business today. However, in the year 2000, the company um, did sell itself or it was purchased by another entity and I believe that it may have, um, that umbrella company actually has a couple offshoots. So you could find these buttons under maybe a couple different names if they're newer buttons. And also if, and this is a big if, if the new companies actually, um, hallmarked the buttons because like I said the old Waterbury button company which are the buttons I actually like and have um, some of them are marked and some of them are not now if the button is military issue there were some of the old older buttons like I'm talking the old ones that may not have markings because at times there's a rush to get things done because hello there's wars going on, or there's preparation for war. Um, you know, there's all sorts of excuses and reasons that totally make sense. So um, not every single uniform button is necessarily going to be marked. Here is one that has the WBC mark on it. I'll put a piece of white paper behind that so you can see it better. Let's give me a second. Like I said, they had several different markings. This is one of them. At the bottom it says WBC, and that's a Waterbury Button Company. And of course there's other wording on there as well, which is basically the serial number. And this is what the front of that button looks like. It's a gorgeous button. It's so regal and chunky. I love how chunky it is. And you can actually feel the weight of this button. And notice it has that dome design. Not the hardcore dome, but soft dome. And then it's a lot of work to put these together and do them right. But it's a company that specialized in putting these together and doing them right. And yes, some of them actually made little tags. Actually, I'll put that to the side. And someone asked me, and I'm going to show, I think I showed you in one of the other videos some of the ideas I have for some of the buttons. Um, one of them is to make bracelets. 
So you can actually buy this wiring pre cinched and shaped and such and it's super it bounces back and it is um steel gauge wire but you can see it holds its shape and it can hold some weight so i was thinking about making some almost like charm type charm string type of bracelets so this is one of my prototypes i'm not loving it but it's just an idea because, you know, buttons, you could do a lot of different things with them. I have a video where I showed you guys that, but I want to try to find something different. Like if it's a bracelet, I don't want to just put it on a piece of string, for example, or flexible rubber bandy wiring stuff. Um, here is one that I think is super incredibly interesting. This is actually a turkey, okay? I have no idea why someone would want a turkey. And actually, let me see if I can make that. There you go. Make it larger for you. And, yep, I have several of these in my collection. And not only is it a turkey button cover... So, Waterberry Button Company made button covers as well. And actually, in the background, the wallpaper that you're looking at, that actually is a sample board, and I'm just showing part of it, of what a salesman would bring to a company to show them some of the implements and little noobly knobbly bobs that the Waterberry Button Company could make um, using mostly brass. They use copper and other materials such as that button cover I just showed you that's actually made out of copper. Um, as I discussed previously, if you've been watching the series, they made fashion buttons and that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that they might have some of these in their collection and those are not just standard buttons. And the other thing to note is Waterberry Button Company buttons usually cost more than standard buttons that you would find, let's just say, at a Notion shop. You usually had to order directly from them um, or the company that you purchased your buttons from ordered directly from them, ergo the salesman samples. Um, so that, and, and some of these actually are salesman samples that I'm showing you, and some of them have never been offered to the public. Um, I actually acquired some of these from, and notice how this one just says Waterbury, Connecticut. I talked about that. Um, that's one of their markings. And you can notice that rounded shank there on the back, because they had, like, their standard... I'm going to say two or three different styles of shanks that they like to use. This is one of them. And on the front, this button actually is very unusual. It has first. So the one, the small s, and t. So this is almost like a, you know, someone was getting, um, a prize or award for coming in first and I don't know if these would have gone on a uniform or I don't know I don't know but I do know that this is a very unusual unique and rare button and this is made out of nickel with a stainless steel back shank And let's show you another fashion button. So pretty. And here's a pretty little number. Let's see if I can make that bigger for you. And it's highlighted, which I don't know if you could see it as well, with black lacquer, or I don't know what it was that they used to sort of highlight I'm trying to see if I can get the best angle for you. Yep, there you can see it. So it has a highlighting with the black in there, which is great because it brings out the detail. And this one, is it 
t guess. Is it hallmarked on the back or is it not? It is not. But one of the things you should get used to after a while is identifying what their shank looks like. Because as I stated, they had like at least three, even, I believe there's probably four different types of shanks that they like to use. And this is definitely one of them. Um, and also notice how it has that circular pattern around the shank area. And this entire back, if I don't continue to drop things, the entire back here is, you know, this whole shank part is made out of one piece. Unlike if it's, you know, you can see the ones that are applied and those that are not applied. And let me see if I can fix that because I hit it. So let's see. And yes, I mean, I have so many of these to show you guys and I really want to get a full guide of them out there for you. Now I have this in nickel as well as in brass. This beautiful shell shape, which is amazing. And then I'll turn it over and this has the W for the Waterberry Button Company on the back. You can see what the shank looks like because like I said, you got to get used to looking at the backs of your buttons. They tell more of a story than you can possibly imagine. And sometimes it's the only way to identify a maker because some of them, you know, they might do something incredibly wild, crazy, and unique. Oh, let me just show you one of the things I, one of my other experiments um, is looking at turning the shells, some of them, not all, just a few of them, into, ta-da, cufflinks. And using this particular type of material, we're finding with some chain to create the link part of it. So I've been doing some research into cufflinks and figuring out how I can make them um, easily, but I want them to be sturdy and something that would be worthy of someone giving them as a gift to someone they care about. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Remember the button I just showed you not long ago that looks like that, <laughs> like this one? That was the smaller size. This is the larger size of that same button. So where is it? So you can see there's a baby and it's mama. So yes, sometimes they would take the same design and create a new die for it but in a smaller size. Did they deal with Mother of Pearl? Of course they did. And look at this amazing Mother of Pearl. That is just beautiful. So you know they took the best materials and used them in their designs. And that's a pretty hardy shank for such a small button. This button is much smaller than a dime. Let me see if I can get... Oh, here you go. Just have to handle this one with care because I don't want to ruin the enameling. Are you ready for this one? I don't think you're ready. You can't be ready. Look at that. There's two lions with um, wings on them on either side obviously I'm using my little okay my giant tweezers <laughs> to hold the other side and then it has this amazing coat of arms so if you know it's a coat of arms like if you can identify what that what that represents or what organization or person or family let me know you can see the LB the letters LB are there, plus whatever all the other designs are. And this one, obviously, lots of black enameling. And then on the back, 
the signature W. So these may have been custom made for a particular family. I wouldn't be surprised if that is what happened. Oh, here's another, what I call it a family when you have like the big one and the small one. But here is a leather, I'll even say this is a dad and the baby. And you may not be able to see, oh, there you go, you got it. So they're both highlighted with the black in between. But once again, it's a small version. You have a two hole and a four hole version, but the same sort of design of button. These are both obviously made of brass. This is what the backs look like. And that's the other thing. They use this, tie, I call it a tire back design for their um, buttons that are like this. It would never just be like one of the, a cheap button would not have this extra tire on the back. It would just be an open back. Um, so that's another, you know, looking at the backs of these, that's why I said it's important for identification's sake, and especially if you want to know if you have a valuable button or at least a viably nice collectible button. So it may not be of extreme value, but you'll know um, if you look at the back of your buttons. And in some cases, it does not matter. If you like the button, you like it regardless. Um, so that's the other thing I say, people who collect should be collecting because they like the buttons, not because they think they're going to go into button nirvana and find their retirement fund, because most likely that will not happen. Although